Hello, everyone, I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Cameron the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex is a dinosaur of the late Cretaceous we are quite familiar with, and the last large carnivorous animal of the dinosaur era. It is very famous and much studied. People have been studying Tyrannosaurus Rex for more than a century. This Tyrannosaurus Rex we see now, is a comprehensive result of the constant changes in our knowledge over the past 100 years. The restoration of Cameron the Tyrannosaurus Rex is based on an exceptionally well-preserved specimen called Sioux, which is over 12 meters long, except for some minor absent parts, such as the end of the tail and nails. It was amazingly completely preserved, allowing us to knowledge the correct size of this dinosaur. In some previous restorations, many body parts, including the length of the legs or arms of T-Rex, or the width of the body, were relied on speculation. Because fossils of these parts have not been well preserved, but Sue preserved all the parts. This T-Rex is accompanied by a skull model, which presents the complete condition of Sue. I didn't make this skull into the restored look, because after restoration, it wouldn't be so recognizable. The original look of Sue was maintained. You can see the severe deformation of the head, especially viewed from the front, it is crooked from side to side. The skull displays many features. If observing from the top, you can see the typical structure of T-Rex. The face is relatively wide and the front of the mouth is pretty narrow. Then from the front, you can see the two eyes looking forward simultaneously. A lot of details of its skull have been kept. Some teeth on this side were absent which used to consider a severe interspecies combat trauma, but another theory believed it had oral parasites that caused this part of the mouth to become diseased. Whatever the cause, the skull is scarred anyway. This skull was intactly preserved. Although there is some degree of deformation, such as the collapse of the nose bridge, all of its subtle structures are present. The head of this T-Rex was restored based on this skull, as you can see, the eyes are facing forward and at the eyebrow, that is, above the eyes, there are two tall keratinous projections. Each individual T-Rex was different, and keratinous parts of many T-Rexes were not preserved. There is another Tyrannosaurus rex specimen called Stan, which has to preserved projections. When we restored Sue, we also made reference to the preserved keratinous parts of Stan, enlarged it, and made the keratinous parts, which were not preserved in Sioux. However, one difference between Sioux and other Tyrannosaurus rexes is the position of the bumps on the top of its head, which is slightly further back than in other individuals. It is raised upwards like a cat's ear behind the eyes, so we combine the preserved keratinous structure of Stan and the anatomy of Sioux to reconstruct this part. The mouth of Tyrannosaurus rex has been the subject of many studies over the years. Those studies analyze whether T. rex had lips. There have always been two views on the lips, one of which is often mentioned is that T. rex might have a lip structure like a lizard, mainly because of many lizard-like nutrient formula preserved at the roots of its teeth. But if you look closely at the skull of T. rex, you can see that the nutrient formula are not in a row like that in a lizard. On the whole face of T-Rex, especially on specimen Sioux, you can see that such small formula are preserved at the bottom of the lower jaw and the top of the nasal bone. In 2022, scientists conducted a CT scan of the skull of Sioux and found well-preserved trigeminal nerve networks, which showed that the openings of each nerve network corresponded to the so-called nutrient formula. This suggests that the skull was very sensitive to temperature and touch, and worked more like a crocodile than a lizard. So we adopted such a view for the time being and restored a structure similar to with hard epidermis of Tyrannosaurus rex. Besides specimens of Tyrannosaurus rex, there are also some specimens of other carnivorous dinosaurs, these relatively large, aggressive carnivorous dinosaurs often used the mouth to bite each other's snout, and the damage caused generally showed that there seemed to be some rigid protective structure on the surface here, so when restoring it, we still believed that there were thick scales around its mouth. In addition, 
One of the reasons why we didn't make lips in this Tyrannosaurus rex restoration is that, when talking about its mouth structure, we often compare it with that of a lizard, but one major difference between the two structures is that in the upper jaw of T. rex, you can see a circle of small foramina corresponding to the lower jaw. Some scientists explain that it resulted from post-mortem fossil extrusion, but that is not the case. Many other carnivorous dinosaurs have that structure too, such as Chianchiosaurus, whose lower jaw was fragmentary and was not occluded with the upper jaw when it was found. However, there are still such small foramina in the upper jaw, indicating that this structure is common. The inside of the mouth of dinosaurs, especially Tyrannosaurus rex, was much deeper than that of today's lizards. When it closed its mouth, a large portion of the lower jaw would be encased inside the oral cavity of the upper jaw, and its teeth would fit perfectly with that small row of holes. If it closed its mouth completely, many teeth of the upper jaw would reach the contour line of the lower jaw, and there would be no extra space to accommodate the lower jaw. What's more, according to its skull, the width of the upper jaw is much wider than the lower jaw. Therefore, when restoring it, we tried to make it with lips, but there is no convincingly reasonable biological explanation yet. Other specimens, such as Stan, show their lower jaw is much shorter than the upper jaw, which leaves a larger space in front and does not seem to have soft tissue in the lower jaw either. So more research needs to be done to discuss this point further. In addition, when it closed its mouth, the posterior end of the T-Rex mandible was very thick, and there was a rounded part in this position. Many restorations have interpreted Tyrannosaurus rex shutting the mouth like this, but in fact, if you look at the skull of T-Rex, especially the skull of Sue, you can see that in its original state, the mandible end was inserted into the cheeks, and two large openings on both sides of the cheeks accommodated the muscles and bones. Next, let's talk about the top of T-Rex head, where tough texture is preserved. The tough texture indicates a thick keratinous substance when it was alive. And the fossil also displays that it had large nostril openings, but they were likely to be slightly downward when alive. In addition, we restored the neck of T-Rex with relatively new techniques. You can see that the neck is much thicker than previously thought, because we can clearly tell the several groups of muscles in the neck of T-Rex, for example, the lateral muscles were attached to the scapula, and the two thicker muscles below were attached to the root of the scapula and the coracoid, and even to the clavicle. The forelimbs of Tyrannosaurus rex were short but relatively stout, the bones of its forelimbs looked toed out, and especially, the section at the root of. The upper arm would be buried in the flesh, so the fossils show two forelimbs very close together, only about this wide. Because some of the bones were buried in the muscle, its forelimbs would stretch outward a bit, so that it looks like this. It had two fingers on the hand. The first one was very short, but the claws were larger. The second finger was longer. It also had a tiny degenerated third metacarpal bone, but had been wrapped inside the flesh. We can see a little bit of an inconspicuous bulge here. Then we move to its body cavity. Tyrannosaurus rex had a robust body cavity almost a cylinder when viewed from the front. This is because many Tyrannosaurus rexes had well-preserved ribs. Each rib was like a large arc, and two arcs formed a shape like an apple. The concave part atop the apple was filled by several muscles that ran through the back when it was alive. Together they formed the look we see now. It had a large pelvis. The ilium was broad. Both pubis and ischium were quite long. In some previous restorations, the belly of Tyrannosaurus rex was restored to an S-shape because its ribs were not that long from the side. According to this model, the ribs come to about this length. Sue and some other specimens of Tyrannosaurus rex have preserved the intact gastralia, which are the ribs that extend from the sternum to the pubis. These ribs were very wide and formed the shape of its rounded belly, making it look more rotund just as the model shows. Like many well-preserved theropods, thighs of Tyrannosaurus rex were connected to its body by a skin membrane resembling that of birds. 
We know that the thighs of modern birds are completely covered with skin, and the range of movement of birds is limited to their lower legs, so the skin of birds is usually attached to the knee or below the knee. But some species of Ornithomimus have preserved evidence of this skin structure on the side of the legs, but it was above the knee, just as this model shows, roughly a little more upward than in the case of birds. So Tyrannosaurus rex would have walked like this, and probably many folds would form between the body and the legs, like today's elephants. Modern large mammals have a similar structure, so the knees may not have been particularly far forward when they walk. We can confirm this from the bones. Tyrannosaurus rex and many other theropod dinosaurs didn't kick their legs forward substantially, but they swung backward to a great extent. Its tail was very thick. From above, you can see the thick root of the tail, which suddenly becomes thinner in the middle section. This change can also be observed from the transverse process on the caudal vertebrae. The transverse process is used to fix muscles. Its upper and lower parts attached to two groups of muscles respectively. This visible depression on the tail is where the transverse processes were located inside. The muscle on its top formed a narrow piece here, and a larger muscle was in the lower position. Then, Tyrannosaurus rex had very large feet with four toes, actually five on each. There is a degenerated toe in this position. You can see a little bump here. From the skeleton, its feet look skinny, but if you've seen the fossilized footprints of T. rex, it had very huge pads on the bottom of its feet. According to well-preserved fossils of some carnivorous dinosaurs, such as Concavenator, you can tell that the area formed by the pads of dinosaurs was much larger than that of their phalanges. The fossils of Concavenator show that its pads could extend all the way down to the underside of the nails, as this model shows. As its toenails grew keratin outward, the pads would rise to the underside of the toenails, forming a relatively strong structure. When it walked, these toenails might wear slightly blunt, like many birds today, but the toenail of the first toe would become sharper because it would be off the ground, and there would be little wear. The first toe of T-Rex was not exactly on the side like many other dinosaurs. It was located further back. In addition, on the foot of Tyrannosaurus rex, like many birds or other carnivorous dinosaurs, there were large scales. In previous restorations, sometimes they were divided into several groups. On the top of the metatarsal bones, they were perhaps into three groups, corresponding to the following toes. But if you look at many birds, you will find that most birds have a row of elongated scales in this position, which are not divided into three locks but become large, broad scales covering the metatarsal bones. Since this section of Tyrannosaurus rex was also flat, we adopted such a way of restoration this time, a row of huge scales covering this position. Finally, let's talk about the scales on the body of Tyrannosaurus rex. Although no large area of scales was found, the scales on various parts of its body were preserved. Most typically, the scales on the tail, above the pelvis, on the side of the body, above the neck, and on the side of the neck are similar. They were basically tiny granules that could be counted in millimeters. These scales were irregular shaped, and the body covered by small scales had numerous such cross grooves. So in this restoration, you can see such small scales on its body, in some areas, just like here, or here and these places on the tail, you can see very shallow grooves. We carried out the restoration completely based on the scale patterns of Tyrannosaurus rex. We now know that scales were found on various body parts of Tyrannosaurus rex, including the top of the neck where feathers were thought to grow, so we can tell that this dinosaur, at least in adulthood, was wholly covered with such scales. In addition, the scales on the top of its head unlike those on other body parts, were more like small round or conical bumps. One right next to the other, they were round particles. If you look closely, you can see that the scales on this part were slightly different from those on the body. In the past, there were reports of large coin-sized scale fragments discovered on the shoulders and lower jaw of Tarbosaurus, 
a close relative of T. rex, but the report was very decades old. Later, some scholars confirmed that was probably a research mistake at that time. The so-called skin of Tarbosaurus was more likely to belong to a hadrosaur that lived in Mongolia, so we didn't make such scales on the shoulders and below the neck in this restoration. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Cameron the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Thank you all. Thank you.